All right, guys, let's talk about schizophrenia. So let's just start with the definition. Schizophrenia is a group of disorders characterized by abnormal social behavior and disturbances in mood, thought processes, behavior, and affect. Now we'll talk about the different types in the next lesson, but in this lesson, I just wanna talk about the general symptoms and nursing interventions for all types of schizophrenia. So to be diagnosed with schizophrenia, a client needs to have at least two of the following symptoms, and at least one of those has to be a positive symptom. So first, what the heck does it mean to say a positive symptom and a negative symptom. Well, first, it's not like good and bad. Think of it more like add and subtract, okay? So positive symptoms add things cognitively. So this may include hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, um, or bizarre behavior. They are new things added to the patient's thought processes. Now, negative symptoms subtract Things. So a decreased emotional range, a loss of interest, a lack of inertia. Now, inertia itself is the tendency to uh, kind of stay in motion. And so if they have a lack of inertia, then it's a tendency to do nothing or remain unchanged. OK, so those are negative symptoms. So positive symptoms add, negative symptoms subtract. Now, we've talked about hallucinations and delusions a few times, so I really just wanna clarify what they are and how each of them is managed. So hallucinations are when a patient experiences an external stimuli that has no organic cause. In other words, it's not really there. Okay, so there's one for every, uh, all of the five senses. So there's a type of hallucination for each one of the five senses. So there's auditory, that means they're hearing something that isn't really there. Olfactory is smelling something. Tactile is they're feeling something that isn't there. Visual, they're seeing something. And gustatory, they're actually tasting something. Let's hope it tastes good. So all of these things are uh, very, very real to the patient, but they aren't really real. Now, delusions, delusions are a false belief firmly held to be true despite rational argument. So they truly believe that this feeling or this situation is reality, even though it's clearly not. So some common types of delusions are uh, delusions of persecution. This is where you kind of feel like everyone's out to get them. So it's kind of a paranoia, but it's really more of like everyone's uh, everything everyone does is to harm this person. Uh, delusions of jealousy is when they feel like their loved one is being unfaithful, even though they have you know, plenty of evidence that actually tells them that's not true, they still believe that. And then delusions of grandeur, where they basically think they are way more important than they really are. Again, these beliefs are very real to them, to the patient, but they are not actually real. Okay. Real to them, but not real. The management of hallucinations, the number one priority is always going to be safety. We want to ask very directly, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? Um, if they're hearing voices, we want to ask them things like, what are the voices saying? Because some people will have auditory hallucinations, um, voices that will tell them to harm themselves or harm others. So always ask, be very direct with your questions um, so that they know exactly what you're trying to get at. Um, now we do wanna validate their feelings and how these things are making them feel because it is very real to them, but make sure you always stay in reality. You never wanna perpetuate, you, ne you never wanna say, oh, me too, unless it actually is true. Okay. So don't say, oh yeah, I see all those spiders crawling on the wall as well, unless there actually are spiders crawling on the wall. So do anything you can to stay in reality. Um, when you start interacting with them, we always start with one-on-one -on -one interaction um, and we want to minimize stimuli that kind of prevents them from getting overwhelmed. And then you can progress to more complex tasks. You can progress to group um, interactions, but you always want to kind of start slow just to uh, keep them from being overwhelmed. And then you want to always monitor for worsening symptoms like increasing fear and anxiety, and then you can always give PRN meds if appropriate. 
Okay, delusions. Again, safety first. Depending on the delusions, safety can be a huge issue, especially when you have things like paranoid delusions. So we do want to ask them for details about their delusions and validate any parts of them that are real and in reality. Sometimes they're based on something real and then they've diluted it to be something more extreme. We don't want to challenge or argue about their delusions, but we want to focus on the feelings that the delusions are creating. So they may have feelings of inadequacy, feelings of insecurity, feelings of anger. So focus on the feelings, focus on what's real, but don't perpetuate these delusions. Okay. Um, always be honest with them. And we're going to hold tight to any limits and boundaries that you've set. I've actually even told clients directly, you know, we're not going to talk about what you think that person is doing, but we can talk about how you're feeling about it and how you're feeling right now. So that boundary, it's going to be able to keep them from fixating on this delusion. Okay. So set those boundaries and be consistent. Some other interventions in general for our clients with cystic Schizophrenia, uh, safety first, always, always. That includes a self-harm assessment. Now, we also want to um, assess and address their physical needs. You know, they may have uh, a loss of interest, so they may need help with ADLs. They may have some sleep disturbances. So we always want to make sure we know what their physical needs are and address them. Always be genuine in your interactions and communicate very clearly. Be present for anything that they need. Um, and remember that, you know, with some disorganized thoughts, it's really good to smart, start small, work up to those bigger things. So start with one-on-one -on -one interactions and work to group sessions. Start with small tasks and move to the more complex tasks. And start with something very simple and direct with no choices. And then move to allowing them to start making choices. We want to start increasing their independence and their ability to make you know, logical and rational choices. And all of this just keeps them from being too overwhelmed before their symptoms are fully under control. So primary nursing concepts for a patient with schizophrenia. So primary nursing concepts for a patient with schizophrenia are gonna be safety, number one, always, um, especially again with paranoid delusions, um, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. Cognition, because they may experience some disorganized thoughts and mood affect, because we can see how some of those negative symptoms will affect their emotions and we may need to do a self-harm assessment. So let's recap. Schizophrenia involves disturbances in mood, thought processes, behavior, and affect. They'll have positive symptoms, which add things to their cognition, like hallucinations, delusions, or bizarre behavior. And they'll have some negative symptoms that subtract things like a decreased emotional range or a loss of interest. Um, we always want to stay in reality. We validate what they're feeling, but we don't perpetuate the delusions or the hallucinations. And then we always put safety first, do that self-harm assessment, maintain that calm environment. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.